Hey, Chris, how's it going up there in Burlington? It's going okay, but I really, really want to get out of my house. I'm so jealous of you all on the House side who are in person. And uh, so far, it sounds like the Senate is content continuing to work virtually. So let's give folks a quick update, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I check in on an almost daily basis with the House Transportation Chair. And, um, you know, she's got a subgroup of her committee that are really hard at work figuring out how do we incorporate some of those recommendations from the Climate Council on uh, in the transportation sector. Um, some looming budgetary concerns in future in and in the out years um, because gas tax revenue continues to decline which you know if we're using less gasoline then you know the revenue is going to decline um so you know we're going to have some big conversations going forward about how we fund regular transportation uh you know the the roads and the bridges and all of that um and uh and but the immediate conversations are really about how do we get more people um you know using public transit how do we get more people using ride share so that a family maybe doesn't have to have uh two vehicles how do you get more people into an electric vehicle or on an e-bike uh to do their commuting safely <laughs> great yeah. so transportation is in good shape Great, and, and we're hearing, I, I'm picking up good signals on the federal infrastructure money, which doesn't have anything to do with Montpelier, although uh, I would guess we'll get to help prioritize some of those projects. But but also there, as I understand it, there is uh, more and more sort of built into that, that framework, some sustainability, whether it's bike and pedestrian. Um, so so uh, good options, exciting there. I, I mean, I'll just say I, I, you know, I serve on Senate Ag, and we had the folks from the Climate Council in, including the subcommittee that dealt with agriculture and resilience. And I, I setting the details aside, I just sort of kicked back and I thought, this is this is so great. You know, Senate Ag has never had hours of discussion about climate, other than, you know, what do we do with rain? You know, some some we're not oblivious, obviously, nobody in that committee is, but. But just an overall framework from from climate thought leaders in state government and beyond, we're in Senate Ag, and and I thought, boy, this is part of what we were trying to do, right? Is the is the overlay of the whole program, the whole state government has to be tuned in and aware, and and so in, in some of that is quite promising, and and a little shot in the arm, and we got to keep digging and pushing hard, right? And you know, this this what we hoped the Global Warming Solutions Act would force us to do, which is that everybody needs to stand up and take notice um, and put their best thoughts forward on how we solve this as a state um, working together. Uh, so a victory that, that we can talk about since we were last um, doing one of these video updates contractor registry has uh, has moved. Um, and, you know, that's the bill that that's really going to make sure that we've got a list, a registry of all the people who Ooh, all the people. Homes. Yep. Yep. Who you cut out, Sarah. Um, yeah, it, really important. And just to remind folks, it, it actually is a consumer fraud problem. It's it's probably the top issue that generates complaints to the attorney general's office, uh, which is important to me and I sp suspect to you. But but the climate piece is uh, this is the class of professionals that that touch the state. If they're a plumber, if they're an electrician, they're already registered. This would loop loop uh, general contractors into that. Very, very light touch from state regulation, but it opens up an avenue for us to make sure they're educated about changes in building code, make sure they're helping Vermonters be aware of, you know, hey, you can get this incentive if you do a heat pump, you know, things like 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 be partners with us. Um, that's that's where the climate piece touches down. So yeah, that's and when we get to the point where we've got some of our uh, career and tech centers geared up to give some uh, some extra training to adults, you know, maybe in the form of an evening or a weekend short course on specific aspects of uh, of how to make our homes more efficient or how to install renewable energy heating systems, we'll at least be able to get the notice about those uh, educational opportunities out to people who are working in the industry, right? We can't uh, we can't solve climate if we 
if we aren't able to reach the folks who are doing those work on our houses right now. So, um, yep, it's good, good progress. So what yeah. do you know about the climate office? Well, before we jump out of that one, I am hearing the governor might be a little grumpy about the idea of the contractor registry. So we've got to help hope that um, he doesn't veto that bill. And so if folks, if folks would help us by just saying, hey, this is important to me, send him an email, call his office. Um, I'm confident Bob the Green Guy can put that on the screen for us. And, um, you know, a little bit of grassroots outreach would go a long way on that one it's true and and thank you for bringing up that call to action because it is help from all of you that uh that makes these bills possible so let's uh let's keep the pressure on um and like chris said this is you know this is our our lightest touch of um of government on on this industry um and we have tried to really balance those concerns about um about any burden that might come it's uh it's pretty straightforward just putting your name on a list and um and that's that's a good thing yeah. so ready to switch gears yeah yeah we're hey, supposed how to we be doing? going quickly <laughs> yeah that's right it's right we, we've only got a couple more minutes left um how are we doing on our climate office what do you hear so so just to back up and help people understand you know this is a huge we're good we're putting millions of dollars out to invest in in green infrastructure help us uh reduce emissions and we have no one in state government who sort of has a this singular focus and and sarah and i've said a lot this isn't like a, oh and also could you help us fix climate you know <laughs> to 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 state workers so there is a proposal and it came from the governor in in his budget or and I, i've got to get clear whether or not it's in the budget or budget adjustment which is moving a little faster but but importantly the governor and staff have recommended uh, a small unit be out of anr i think it's nine people to really oversee this and that would mean oversee grants oversee the data which is very very important oversee you know uh, track our our uh, not only our investments but our progress and and be somebody the legislature and the public could turn to and say well give us the update how are we doing um so really great i thought we were going to have to battle for that and and uh, seems like uh, the administration has started and and that means it's much less of a battle and and much more of a fine tuning and trying to trying to make sure you know due, due, due diligence but i'm really uh, it is another example of a real shift in attitude and and you and i and others that care about this are not make having to make the case now we have to say well this isn't going far enough you know we, we have a lot of work to do but we start from a much greater common uh level of understanding which is really heartening to see yep well we're going to call that a, a step in the right direction and a, a small check mark victory for the day. Um, so I wanna give a little quick little update on clean heat standard. Um, if folks listen to VPR, there was a, a little segment about it um, just this morning. Right now, lawmakers are weighing a policy that would bring major changes to the way Vermonters heat their homes and businesses. The idea is to create a clean heat standard that would slowly change the existing fossil fuels based market to reduce emissions without crushing small businesses along the way. The state's climate action plan says the legislature needs to pass a bill this session that gets the ball rolling. And we have climate and environment reporter Abigail Giles here to talk through the details. Hey, Abigail. Hey, Anna. Hey, Henry. So first, what is a clean heat standard and how would it work? So basically, the clean heat standard is a um, and uh, you should tune into that because it's a, a nice description of what the program is doing and sort of an explanation of how um, how they're putting together this important policy uh, and the important ways that it helps the the industry out there who is currently bringing us our heating fuels to be a part of the transition. So it's not as if we're putting that entire industry out of work it's actually a way of helping bring um bring those uh fuel dealer and uh fuel and uh heating uh installers into the transition um moving forward and uh so that bill is being worked on in house energy and technology um they are i think on track to get it out of committee within a week or two which is great um that puts us 
on track to get that over to the Senate. And then hopefully the Senate will um, will have some climate bills to send that will keep energy and technology busy during the second half. So what do you know about how what we're doing on the Senate side? So there's been uh, some work uh, underway on the uh, sort of equity screening and uh, environmental justice work that uh, we've talked a little bit about and and uh, is an important framework for for us to correct basically the some of the uh, communities that have borne the brunt of of environmental degradation, whether it's, you know, there's poverty, there's people of color, there's just historically disadvantaged folks um, who who we, we have to be, we have to recognize as we come up with solutions play a, an important role, can't be sort of secondary to our strategy. So there's a, um, a strategy uh, or a bill rather to to advance that. That's been worked on Senate Natural Resources. Um, I'm, I'm frustrated to say that I'm not confident we'll be able to upgrade our renewable energy standard. That as we discussed a little bit because of the intensity of this session for now three months to go, um, and and a very very hefty workload, uh, like I've never seen on a host of issues. We were kind of, uh, and I've been very directly involved in in trying to get a coalition of renewable energy interests and and utilities together to say here here's what we could do because we do need to modernize our our uh, statutes there. That has not come to be. Now, I'm not. We're not giving up. Uh, but I do want to alert people that that's the status as far as I understand it. There's a lot of federal money that could go to grid infrastructure. And um, I was thinking they would that would mesh well with an increase or, or well, uh, an acceleration of our renewable energy standard to get to 100% renewable. Uh, but we may have to look at that on its own and, and hold the RES update to another time. So still important work that we can do in that sphere, uh, but a little bit of a setback and, you know, we never get everything we are shooting for. So I sort of begrudgingly accept that at this point. Uh, but that is, a, that is a frustration, uh, still, uh, the lay of the land. Um, and another thing that I've been working on in the Senate is, is, uh, local incentive for schools to buy local food. This is something we've been working on for years, the farm to school um, priorities. And last year we funded it in a more aggressive way, but it was a one-time funding. This year, again, it's in the governor's budget to maintain that. This is really important for our food systems, a big, big climate impact and and creating a baseline of, of markets for locally. Of course, there's schools everywhere. So ideally, um, yeah, it's a sort of simple, simple concept. Our kids at schools uh, should be eating as much local food as possible, but making that a reality has been taken longer and, and been harder than one might think. So I'm glad to see that advancing. That's something that Senate Ag has worked hard on. Well, thank you for your work on that in Senate Ag. Um, uh, given that I sit on the Government Operations Committee, we don't we don't have a whole lot of uh, really uh, energy and climate related work to do. So it always makes me a little bit jealous that you get to sit there and, and um, you know, work on the, the nitty gritty pieces of these really cool ideas. So thank you so much for, for doing that good work. And uh, we, I think are probably about ready to sign off here. We've got, um, we'll do another update in a week or so. And, uh, and thank you all for, uh, for tuning in. I um, want to loop back to that call to action, which was uh, to call the governor's office and, and ask him to sign the contractor registry bill. Um, it's an important bill for consumer protection. It's an important bill for future climate work that we want to do. It's an important bill for workforce development as we look to, um, to help folks who are doing um, contracting work uh, learn new skills and, uh, and, and um, have those skills benefit us in terms of uh, climate change. So thanks for your help, Bob, the green guy, who's always, he's always the, the, the man of the hour in terms of uh, getting us together to do these uh, update videos. Would we say he's always making us look good? I, I think that's too far. He that's tried. probably a stretch. <laughs> it's, you know, there's not a lot to work with, Bob. If we would only follow every instruction that he gave, 
success. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Sarah.